Greetings from Egypt. We are on the River Nile, heading towards Aswan, and more specifically to the Elephantine Island, where there are some amazing megalithic structures not properly understood by most academics. This is the five-star cruise ship the Blue Nile, which we use every March on our yearly tour of Egypt, and it is a truly spectacular ship to be on. As you likely know, the Nile is one of the two longest rivers in the world, but it's not that wide. The Amazon, which is in Peru and Brazil, is a much wider river, but the Nile has an incredible history and is very majestic. Especially when you get outside of the cities where you can see life um, as it has been for hundreds of years. You still see oxen uh, working in the fields. And then we transfer to a smaller boat here, as you can see. That's Aswan in the background. And with the boats still plying the river in this area, it gives you a very timeless feeling. It's always a pleasure to uh, travel to Egypt once a year, because there's always new things to find. Such as boomerangs in this museum, it's likely, literally, that they were brought from Australia. But what we're here to look for and look at is catastrophic damage at this site on Elephantine Island. The precision of the stonework, especially in granite here, tells us that this work is pre-dynastic. It could not have been done by the dynastic Egyptians because they did not have the capability of cutting granite. At least not efficiently. And you would first think this is simply damage done by some culture, but the destruction level is so excessive that it could have been done by a plasma burst from the Sun 12,000 years ago. Luckily, objects such as what I am uh, walking up to now are preserved more or less intact. Now this object is one piece of granite and the level of precision, once again, is beyond the capability of the dynastic Egyptians and had to have been an inheritance from an earlier culture that had lost ancient high technology. And also what its original function was is completely unknown. Someone of course will say well it's a ceremonial something but we don't really know what the original function was. And look at the weathering on this granite. Look at the huge cracks. This is not the result of normal weathering, but this could have been done if intense heat had struck the surface in the distant past. And these also are parts of the original structure that have been reassembled, both in dynastic times, and what you're looking at here is actual dynastic addition. So the dynastic Egyptians made repairs using limestone to the original structure. Again, the dynastic Egyptians were not able to cut and shape granite very well, but limestone was not that difficult for their hardened bronze and iron, possibly even steel tools. So it is the site itself which is telling us who made it and possibly when. In many locations in Egypt, we find the remnants of lost ancient high technology that was later adopted by the dynastic Egyptians and used often for a completely different purpose. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you like this. Mm -hmm.